The phrase in verse 21, make you perfect or make you complete or equip you, is a translation of one word. To us in 2012, that word is Greek. It, ex- it just means nothing. But to those of Christ's time, it was a word which was rich in meaning. Depending on what context you use, it had four normal uses. So no matter who is in the congregation, it would have just put a picture in their mind. Number one, medically, to doctors, this word always meant to set a broken bone. Now, most of you have probably heard that equip means to set bones. That's, that's the medical terminology. Commercially, to a fisherman, this word meant to sew together or mend a broken net. Now, we find that in the book of Matthew when Jesus called the disciples. They were sitting on the seashore with their mending kit, and they were sewing up where the, the nets had broken and where the fish would get loose when they were trapped in this net. And so, to a, uh, commercially, to a fisherman, it, it was to mend their nets. Nautically, to a sailor, this word meant to outfit a ship for the voyage. So if they came up to the dock and they were going to rent or hire or use a, a ship, they would say, is this ship catartizo? Is it absolutely outfitted? Does it have everything for the sails and for all the tack and this and that and the water you need and the, and the rudder? Has it all been checked? Is everything ready to go to a sailor? Is this net ready to use to a fisherman? Has this broken bone been set and bound so it will grow straight and stronger on that break than it was before it broke? Is all that. But it doesn't stop there. Fourthly, militarily to soldiers, this word meant to equip an army for battle. Now, if any of you are old enough, do you remember the incredible run-up to the first Gulf War? It was one of the greatest movements of material and manpower since World War II. I mean, nothing before that had rivaled this this humongous airlift and, and, and all the ships bringing in tanks by the thousands, and it was just unbelievable. That was the preparation for an army. This word militarily means to equip an army for battle, every single thing they need. Right now, going through the... Khyber Pass and wherever else they're going into Afghanistan is an incredible river of trucks because you don't just need bullets. An army needs everything. Everything has to be brought to them so they're undistracted for what they're doing. So militarily, if a general came out and said, is this, is this group katartizo? It meant do they have every single thing they need? to fight the battle. Now you say, oh, that's interesting. So what does that have to do with the Bible? Well, think back to this verse. It says, the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. That's an all, a run-up. That's a, an, uh, a clause that is built upon and, and focusing on this central idea. All that Christ did is for verse 21, to make us in his body complete. Now let me apply this before we go to communion because we're going to have the communion of the katartizod saints. To us in Christ's church, this word means that Jesus, who in verse 20 loved us so much that he shed his blood, he wants us to be all of those things, medically, commercially, nautically, militarily. He wants all of He wants his church to realize what the blood of the covenant accomplishes in us and through us. Now think of this. Jesus, as a good shepherd, wants to kneel beside each of us tenderly to set any broken bones in our lives. Why? Because we're supposed to follow him, and we're supposed to walk a straight path. But if we have a broken bone, we're hobbled from that. We cannot run a race if if a bone is broken. We can't even walk especially if our foot or leg or, or some part of us that, that is involved in walking is broken. Jesus has set out for us the plan. He comes and he sets the bone so that we can follow him and run the race. But how does he do it? Most often, Jesus uses the willing people 
of his church to do so. Did you know when a Christian has some type of a disaster and when, when they go through and they're, they're, there we go, I've got it closer now, you have to turn it down, I'm going to scare everybody, uh, St. Clifford. But when, when a believer breaks a bone and they're, they're kind of uh, waylaid by the side of the road with a broken limb or, or some part of their, their whole life is just out of kilter, they're sidelined. And the Lord wants to knit that bone, but how does he do it? Ephesians 4 says, saints, using his word, in the power of his spirit, come alongside that believer and encouragingly help them to get that broken bone. Now, it's the Lord that heals it. It's the Lord that strengthens it. It's the Lord that makes them complete. But the Lord uses people. Have you ever thought that that God doesn't do stuff on his own? When he wanted the, the Ethiopian eunuch saved, he didn't just save him, he sent Philip. And Philip had to share the gospel with him. When, when the Lord wanted the Apostle Paul discipled, he didn't, he didn't just take him into the backside of the desert. He had him go to the house of Ananias who would take him, explain to him, baptize him. And I could, I mean, just think. The Lord does not do all of the work of the ministry from heaven throwing it down upon us. He throws it out through us. Do you know what shepherding is all about? Us becoming the hands of the Lord to mend the broken.